In the previous video, I discussed the Jacobian solver. This is a fairly easy inverse kinematic solver to implement, but very difficult to actually understand how it works. This time I'll be covering the cyclic coordinate descent solver, which in contrast are kind of opposite to the Jacobian, in that they are easy to understand but hard to get just right. While the pseudocode isn't much more complex, I would say the cyclic solvers are harder to debug. It's kind of harder to reason about the different matrix operations they do once you stray away from the standard solver. So make sure you use your unit tests here, especially for the various transform decomposition functions. I'll be going over three basic cases of the cyclic descent solver. The forwards ascent solver, the forwards descent solver, and the backwards descent solver, or the inverse solver. The basic cyclic coordinate descent algorithm is as follows. For each joint, convert the goal to joint space, convert the effector to joint space, get the rotation between the two vectors, and finally clamp the value to the joint limits. To get a better idea, let's look at the first variation of this algorithm, the classic cyclic coordinate descent, aka the forwards descent algorithm. I call it the forwards descent algorithm because it computes forwards. That is, it tries to optimize the effector position based on a fixed root position, the tip being the effector. Then it descends the chain, that is, it starts from the tip and works backwards. I'll be using Spark to better illustrate this. It draws the joint chain in blue, and you can see the target over there. Now I'm going to draw some red lines here showing how the solver works. This one from the current joint to the effector, and one from the jo current joint to the root. What the algorithm does is it considers a simplified joint with only these two segments in it, and then it moves that one joint so that the effector points to the target. Then we go over each other joint from the tip to the root, that is, in descending order, and adjust each one in turn. To put it in another way, we can compute the position of the effector by chaining together all the joints and bones into one big multiplication problem. And for the coordinate descent, we want to solve for one of these variables. Let's say it's this joint here. We're going to split the chain into two segments, the one preceding it in joint space and the one following it, the effector. We convert the target to coordinate space of the segment preceding the joint and compare it to the position of the effector. This works really well when the target is fairly close to the effector as seen here. But as we move the effector further from the target, some weird stuff starts to happen. It twists itself into knots or maybe it rolls itself up. And sometimes it does neither but still misses a target it can clearly hit. What's going on here? Well, we can get an idea when we revisit the animation and go one step at a time. The simplified effector now does not follow the curve of the joint chain and merely goes right through it. So we can visualize the problem occurring here and the kind of logic it's using to get the result of rolling up. So what can we do about this? Well, one idea is to iterate over it a few times. We can do the same thing again and again, and as we do more repetitions, the chain unwinds itself and points towards the effector. But this takes a lot of repetitions. Another idea is what if we compute the changes, then multiply that result by a dampening constant. As you can see, this pre prevents it from rolling up, but it also doesn't reach the target, even with lots of iterations. Rather, because we're dampening the result, it has to reach for it asymptotically. But what if instead of computing all the joints and then dampening, we dampened e after each joint individually? This makes a bit more sense because now each joint is computed with a more accurate idea of what the final result will be. Well, we can see the result here. It gets closer to the target, but it still doesn't quite reach it. I'll leave it up to you, though, to decide which one looks nicer. A third idea. What if we add different stages? We'll start with a dampened solver, and then iterate without dampening the result. This converges a lot faster, but can we do better? This brings us to the second algorithm, the forwards ascent algorithm. In this one, the idea is the same, but instead of going over each joint from tip to root, we ascend the chain from root to tip, so let's try that. As you can see, our solver got it in one, but it's not terribly natural looking. And it gets even worse when we try it on the cat model. The ascent solver creates terribly unnatural movements because it starts by hyperextending the spine before it adjusts the leg, which is not at all how animals move. And it even gets worse when we target multiple things with full body IK. In this case, because both targets are moving the spine in opposite directions, the best case scenario, they'll cancel out. In the worst case scenario, it will pop and writhe about unpleasantly. Can we fix this by dampening it? Well, first we'll try dampening the chain as before. And this isn't terribly useful as you can see. But what if we dampen each joint again? This gets some better results. Instead of the stiff rotation before, we have a nice arcing motion and more of the body is involved. But the spine is still hyperextended. 
but it makes more sense that this would get a good result compared to the last one because at each joint we are no longer changing the result we got before. But while it's not terribly natural, we can get a really fast result by starting with a joint dampened forward ascent solver, then switching to a half dampened forward descent solver, and finally iterating on the full strength descent solver until we hit our target. As you can see on this graph, this converges the fastest for targets we have trouble reaching. This avoids rolling up, but it does also create a natural motion. So it should only be used if we know we need to hyperextend the spine to reach the target in the first place. So can we do even better than this? This brings us to the backwards descent solver. Before we set the root position and solve towards the target, what if instead we set the effector position to where the target is and try to sort backwards towards the root? In this animation for the backwards descent solver, you can see exactly that. The hypothetical inverse chain is in green, and each joint attacks on a segment and tries to solve towards the root, trying to align itself with the actual skeleton. I've made two versions of it. In the basic backwards descent solver, each joint tries to rotate so that the joint reaches the root, and in the inverse solver, I've taken inspiration from fabric. And just like in fabric, each joint tries to target the previous position of its immediate parent. We can immediately see that this solver works insanely well. It blows the others out of the water. It's just as fast as them, but it doesn't need multiple iterations. It gets a good naturalistic result in one try. So let's try it on some animal models to make sure it works well. And we find that it just goes nuts. It creates an awful result. It just looks like trash. What went wrong? Well, while the previous solver used the rotation of the target as a hint, the backward solver absolutely needs a correct rotation or it can't run. Here it got the roll of the target wrong, and that just messed up the entire inverse chain that it's using for the solve and produced a garbage answer. I'm not going to spend much more time on this because it's so finicky that I haven't found a good use for it. But if you have any ideas for fixing it, leave them in the comments. That wraps up this video. If you want a write-up of the cyclic coordinate descent algorithm, I've left one in the description, as well as the program I've used for the IK examples of this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.